How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another brand new video. In today's video we're going to be checking out to see where you should spend your $60. So, let's get started. First, before we start this video, I do just want to say thank you guys so much for getting me so close to 5,000 subscribers. I believe the last time I checked, uh, it was a little over uh, 4,700 subscribers, um, but I then posted on my Instagram story later that it was 4,800 subscribers, so it's pretty insane to see that kind of like incrementation over time. It's really super cool. Also, thank you to all the new viewers, every single one of you coming in and hitting that subscribe button. It really, truly does mean a lot. So we are so close to 5,000 subscribers. That would be awesome if we hit it. I'm not saying anything besides that. So let's get on to this video. So as I said before, where should you spend your $60? Biggest disclaimer I have to say so far is that neither of these are actually $60. In fact, the Vulp, which is this one right here, is actually a little bit more than $60. And the uh, 3D printed design from Skunk Bear is actually a little lower than $60. $60 is just kind of like the perfect mid-range price point. It, is, it helps me kind of make the title instead of, this is the, which battle song should you spend your $75.69 on? But first, in this comparison, let's take a look at the 3D printed design from Skunk Bear. This comes from a small maker who makes 3D printed knives called Skunk Bear who reached out to me on one of my YouTube videos to see if I wanted to try one of his 3D printed designs. And here it is right here. This has a name, but I think I'm going to very much butcher it. So I'm just going to call it the 3D printed design for now. But I will put the link to his Instagram in the description down below so you can go check his website, which is in the link in his bio on his Instagram. So you guys can go check out these for yourself. They're around 50 to $60 and the last time I checked. According to Skunk Bear, one of the biggest inspirations for this 3D printed design was planes and how they're held together with nothing but screws and rivets. If that's true, I will never be flying again. He developed this into this design by pinning the knife shut with no screws whatsoever. Whatever you see here that's metal on the knife is used to pin the knife shut or is used as a weight system. In between the handles and the blade is a bearing system. That's right, bearings on a 3D printed balisong. And I must say, it is exquisite, but we'll talk about that in a second. Not only that, but the pin system on this knife is pinsless, so it's using the contact points on the handles and the actual Zen pin notch itself on the blade to separate the handles apart. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. There actually has a really nice handle gap on it. It is using a small bar here with some rubber around it, like a rubber O-ring to sort of separate the handles on the inside. So the pinless system doesn't really work on the closed system, but there is some support from that rubber O-ring around that slightly metal weight. So that's enough for the specifications on the 3D printed design from Skunk Bear. Let's talk about the Vulp, which I imagine is the reason there are a lot of you here. So this knife is very similar to that of the Morris. In fact, it's pretty much the same specifications. The only thing that's different from the Morris uh, on this one is that the design is different. This design was heavily given inspiration from Will Hirsch, who we all know. There's really no need to explain more about Will Hirsch. Him and Brandon gave a lot of input on the design of this knife, and I do think there are a lot of good things about the overall look and construction and overall functionality that this knife brings to the table. First off, this blade looks so much better than the Morse. I have to say that I really like the shape of this Bowie blade. It's both simple and... Um, It's very simple, and there's not much going into it, but it's a very simple looking blade and also has some nice functionality as well, because it comes with a bottle opener. That's that's how it's functional. This is not a live blade. This is a trainer and very telling by the holes, very stereotypical trainer holes in it. Uh, it does have a rounded tip, so you won't have to worry about stabbing yourself or putting a hole in the floor or something like that. It has a crown spine everywhere. Basically, everywhere on this blade is a spine and is crowned. Uh, Thankfully, it is not rounded. I, I would really hate if this was rounded. You also have the Fox logo with the X and the Bally's on it. It looks it looks pretty nice. It's on a Zen Pin system. You can see um, there is a Zen Pin notch that separates these together. There is a press fit Zen Pin system inside the channel constructed aluminum handles, which is where we continue the next part of the specification. You can see all along these handles, the huge milli marks on these handles, and they add some really excellent grip. One of the things I did not like about the Morris was that there simply wasn't enough grip on the knife for me to properly flip it. It was a really nice flipping knife and it was very neutral, but it simply didn't have enough grip to lack it up. And that is 
one of the biggest problems with aluminum. There are a lot of finishes you can get on titanium, but even with the anodized finishes on titanium, it's going to be a lot grippier just by default. With aluminum though, it is super slick and you really need all kinds of jimping and um, etching into the, in the handles in order for it to be grippy. So that's why there are these giant milli marks all the way down the handle and continuing all the way down the handle of the face since there's no jimping on the face. However, on the side though, is where we get into the interesting parts of the jimping. You can see that there are a bunch of ribs on the side here. That is some absolutely deep jimping, like some of the deepest jimping I've ever seen on any kind of knife and you can absolutely feel it. So those are the specifications on each knife. And now let's talk about the pros and cons. Now, normally when I go into a comparison video, it's kind of hard to depict to you which one is better. And I really do think it just comes down to weighing the pros and cons. If you're looking at a specific knife in this video, you really do have to weigh those pros and cons because once again, this hobby is super subjective and you might think some of the pros and cons that I think are pros and cons, might think it, you might think it in a different contrast. So you just weigh the pros and cons and see what works best for you. So let's get started off on some of the pros and cons of the 3D printed design from Skunk Bear. The first pro I do have to say is the pin system. I really do like how this thing is set up. It's very similar to a lot of the other mainstream um, 3D printed designs as it uses a pin in the center of the blade to hold the handles open together in the closed position. But besides that, it is completely pinsless uh, as far as the open position. And it holds the it holds the handles open pretty well and the Zen pin notch is almost absent completely. And I really do like that. The next thing I do have to say as a pro is the length. This is very similar to a lot of the length of ballast songs that are more mainstream. And you'll definitely be finding this to be very similar to measure to a lot of other ballast songs, especially the Vulp. Also, we do have to mention the pro that is one of my favorites, which is the bearing system. I do think this is super cool to be added into a 3D printed ballast song, but I think it works really, really well with this ballast song, especially since it is pinned shut, which means it's not going anywhere, the bearings aren't going to fall out, and it's going to really hold those tolerances it had out of the box super, super tight. And if those pins do fall out, you can just put it back in. There's really nothing else to fix that. You just put it back in, super easy fix. But that's kind of where the pros end on this knife. There are a lot of more cons than there are pros. One of the biggest ones is the comfortability in this knife. Specifically in this channel area uh, along the inside of the handles, it is like Burr City in here. It is such a huge hotspot all the way down. Uh, it is just really uncomfortable to put your hand on. It feels like you're t touching like a broken edge of a rock. Like if you ever took a, like a piece of sandstone or something and like smashed on something and then took your finger and rubbed on the edge of it, it feels like that. It feels very rough in there. So doing things like Chaplin, so doing tricks like chaplains, you can really, really feel it. It's super, it's just super rough. I wouldn't recommend flipping this. The only thing I'm glad is, is that it's super light uh, and you won't be like getting too much damage to your finger because of that. Speaking of lightness, let's move on to the next pro, which is the weight of this knife. I think the weight on this knife is too light, but that is sort of the main con with a lot of 3D printed ballast songs, especially some of the more mainstream 3D printed ballast songs is that they are simply too light to do many of the major tricks that involve wrist movement or finger movements. One thing I find myself doing with this knife is it just doesn't carry any momentum as I put too much effort into it and it just kind of spins off. Or if I put too little effort into it as I think it's too light, it just won't do anything at all and it just won't move, which is the biggest con with 3D printed ballast songs in general and not just this one. The next con is these handles are simply too round. When it comes to doing a lot of tricks that I like to do, I do a lot of finger movements and a lot of wrist movements. And this knife just spins out of those wrist movements. It like does a fan out of the wrist movement and just like whatever I tr whatever kind of trick I try to do, it just kind of spins off and flies out of my hands. It doesn't really cope well with a lot of things, especially ladders. It hates ladders. It just cannot stay still and you end up spinning the knife completely backwards and you're like, how did I end up this way? So <laughs> it's just too round. I would definitely think that this knife just needs to be a bit more square. There's nothing wrong with it having like rounded edges or it just having a chamfered edge, but I do think this knife does have to be a bit more square for it to be overall usable. So those are the pros and cons I have with the 3D printed ballast on from Skunk Bear. Now let's get on to the pros and cons I have of the vault. The performance, the material quality, and the overall design of this knife is definitely something you'd be paying over $100 for at least you think, but since this knife is around 60 to $75, it is surprisingly cheap. So that's why it's one of the biggest pros. The next pro that I have is the balance. I am so excited to say this, but we finally have the first handle bias knife. It has been so long since 
a trainer, let alone any knife I've touched in the last, like, weeks, has been handle bias. It is, like, it is crazy. Like, I'm going crazy over this. Am I the only one that's crazy? I see a lot of people being like, oh, I don't like its handle bias, or, like, they don't prefer it, but I do. I do prefer it, and I like it. I really like the balance of this. It doesn't feel super handle bias, where it's, like, so heavy. In fact, I wouldn't really even call it handle bias, because it just has some handle weight. That's what I would really call, because... Again, it's not handle bias to a sense where it's going to be bad. Uh, it's not like a, a Platheus knife. It is <laughs> okay, it's neutral with some handle weight. That's what I will call it. I'm just ecstatic that it's uh, handle heavy in a sense uh, instead of it being blade bias. But as a trainer, I probably should have just expected it to be having some handle weight. The next pro I have is the grip on this knife and it is absolutely phenomenal. I really do think this design is super, super functional uh, in making this thing a super grippy knife. The absolutely deep uh, jimping grooves in this, on the side of the knife is really, really functional. It does help with a lot of tricks and especially maintaining the grip on the knife. One of the biggest problems with aluminum knives is that they are just slippery and this knife definitely is par from the course on that and is, is very slippery very few times. I do love these really deep milling um, patterns on this the face and the handles and the again really deep grooves on the side handles for jimping super really 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 nice grip overall on this knife and that's why it's one of my pros the last and final pro is obviously bushings i i said this time and time again i will take a bushing system over bearing systems any day bearings in my opinion are much more finicky and they are super super hard to get exactly right especially with the covenant that i had a few videos ago it was super finicky, and if you torqued the screw on it even a little bit too much, it would just be thrown out of whack, and bushing systems don't even come close to doing that, and I'm super happy this knife has bushings in it, and we will have bushings in it to continue its production run. Super awesome. I will say, though, this isn't the best bushing system in the world. I did lose tolerances the day I got it because I dropped it on carpet once. To be fair, I was very impressed with the tolerances out of the box because... It was solid, like perfectly solid, and it felt very, very smooth. However, I had to tune the safe handle bushing because it just would not stop tapping. Like, like safe handle was cranked all the way down, and it, it, it had endless tap. So I tuned the bushing, lapped it down just a little bit, uh, and polished it a little bit, as well as polishing the washers, and it is perfectly fine. Like, it does have some wiggle, but it doesn't have tap, so it's, it's, up, to, it's up to standards now. Now moving on to the cons of the Vulp, and the first con I have is the hardware. These are T8s, and I, I don't understand why T8s were included in this. Will, if you had input on the design, should have made them T10s. Thankfully, they did provide a T8 one fourth bit for screwdrivers like the Weeha screwdrivers, so that's pretty nice for them to include that. However, why not just make a T10? I, I think we all know by now that T10 is just superior to T8. However, uh, it is seemingly good hardware, so I won't knock it for that. I'm just kind of disappointed that it is a slightly lower size than what I'm used to. The last and final con that I have for this knife is that it doesn't really seem too flowy. It does do very well on aerials, but it doesn't really seem too flowy when it comes to regular tricks. Especially when you're flipping it in your hand and doing all sorts of wrist movements that I've mentioned before in the 3D printed design. It doesn't really seem to want to flow with them too well. However, aerials are very predictable, which is kind of thing that I see a lot on the b-roll shots in Will Hirsch video. He seems to do a lot of aerials and I imagine that was something kind of input in design. So anyways, if I were to pick one, I would definitely have to pick the Volp because this is just a better performer. This is a pretty nice novelty to have, but it, at this point right now in its production, it is kind of just that, a novelty, sort of a thing you can take out and say, oh, that, that flips pretty nice. Then put it away and take this thing out and flip it for a bit. So not that there's anything wrong with 3D printed ballast songs, there's definitely a lot to improve, especially with how uh, 3D printed ballast songs have been innovating and 3D printed overall science has been innovating over the years, especially with things like 3D printed metal being on the rise with certain automotive companies. I think that is very, very cool, but I think there is still a lot improvement to be done when it comes to 3D printed ballast songs. Right now, it just seems like 3D printed ballast songs are here because they're 3D printed and there's really no other pros to it. So until it's uh, uh, significantly improved, I don't really think I'll be buying a 3D printed ballast song. But let me know your opinions in the comment section below. Which one would you choose? And uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe you got some financial advice out of this. And let me know in the comment section which one you're going to pick for your next purchase.
Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as that like button. Uh, and I will see you guys later.